Great. It's going to be a fun call. Um, now, this is the first. We're going to probably do. Uh, we're going to do a few of these, but we're going to uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about um, this revealing, letting go process as we move forward, and we're going to be moving forward into a, a letting go weekend. If you guys want to get involved in that, uh, and I'll talk more about that too, where we spend a whole weekend going through this stuff, and um, I'm super excited to do that. Actually, never done that online before. I've kept it pretty private, and uh, I'm excited to do it online because it'll be. It'll be really us taking a new step, a step in a new direction, which can allow us to help more people around the planet on a bigger level. People that are in remote areas that can't necessarily get access to the work, we can get to those people easily through online means. So, so let's make this an awesome adventure and let's keep improving it each time. Um, now, for those of you that are on the call, I don't know how many of you have experience with letting go, um, Andrew, and what I'm calling revealing, because the reason I'm calling it revealing, I'm going to get to that right away, is, is, um, is because letting go is a revealing process. Um, and people get too stuck on the word letting go or releasing. And what you're really doing is revealing a higher part of yourself. And so I want to talk about what that looks like, what that feels like, and what that is. And so, but before I do, I want to get started with an overall uh, perspective. I probably have some people. Does anybody on the call, go ahead and put in the chat now, if you're on the call and you um, have no experience with letting go or uh, revealing, releasing, anything like that. Um, just write, I don't, or something like that. Okay, awesome. We got one person. Mm -hmm. Letting go is a concept, okay. I don't. So there's a few of you. Okay. So I'm going to talk about what letting go is. Letting go as a brand or as a technique was actually originally created by a guy named Lester Levinson. And um, he was a guy that was in the, in the around the mid 1900s was um, had, uh, he basically tried everything under the sun, tried to build all kinds of businesses, pushed himself and through tons of pushing and forcing and driving, he tried to force himself to become successful. What ended up happening in his life uh, was that he reached a point at about 41 years old where he was dying. He was dying from heart disease and a bunch of other stuff, thrombosis, I guess is what they called it back then. And he had a bunch of other stuff going on. The doctor told him he only had about two weeks to live. So Lester uh, goes home and he's really angry. He's angry at the doctor because he felt like the doctor didn't care. He felt like the doctor was callous. He felt like the doctor was, um, was basically um, sending him home with a, with a sentence to death. And he wanted, uh, and he was just mad. So he said, you know, what do I most want before I die? The doctor said, stay in bed as much as possible. You, you don't have much time. And Lester said, well, if I'm going to die soon, what do I most want? And what he came to was the realization that what he most wanted was happiness. He said he spent his whole life pushing and forcing and fighting, and he wanted to experience a moment of happiness. And that's kind of how releasing was born. So what he started doing was he started searching for answers. What is happiness? And he couldn't find it in any books or anything like that. He kept searching and he had advanced degrees and nothing was working for him. So he finally stopped all that. And he said, what if I just, you know, I'm a smart guy. What if I just thought about this a bit? And he sat down and he said to himself, what is happiness? And then he said, well, when was I the most happy? That was the next question. And I was the most happy when, um, when I felt love is what he realized one day. He said, when I experience love, um, I'm adjusting the sound a bit to get rid of some of that echo. Hopefully that sounds better, guys. Um, let me know if that sounds better. Do you guys, does that sound a little uh, less echoey to you guys? Okay, good, awesome. Fine either way, then I'm not gonna worry about it. So he, um, he, he asked himself, you know, when was I, when was I the happiest? And he said, Hmm, have I ever been happy. Then he thought to himself and he said, yeah, there were a few times in my life and I was really happy when I was being loved. And he remembered this old girlfriend he had, and he said he felt really happy with her. But he said, the problem with that was that the love was fleeting. In other words, she would love me one minute. And if she got mad at me, then I wasn't as happy. And he said, so I couldn't control that. I can't control when people love me. And then he finally said to himself, well, what, is, uh, what can I control? And he said, I can control when I love somebody else. And that's what he realized. And so he, he came to this, this, this idea that if he could learn to love everybody without expectation of return, that he could actually experience happiness. 
So he started working on this and he said, okay, have I ever felt love for another person? And he, he was able to isolate three moments in his life. This is important. And I want you guys to hear this because I think people forget this really fast. He isolated three moments in his life and he went through those visceral experiences. And one was with a best friend where he was setting up a tent and they were out camping and it was, a, it was, a, it was an important moment for him uh, where they really bonded just talking. Another one was, was, was when he was loving his girlfriend that, that uh, had left him. She'd left him later, but at the time he was loving her, he said, <clears throat> it felt amazing. And I think there was a third one. And, um, and he sat there with those moments for a little bit and see, to see if he could really re-experience them a little bit. And he could, he could get this feeling of love by going through those memories and kind of waking up in his body. Now, what I've found and what most people find, this is why yoga with heart yogas and all that gets so popular, is if you can learn to really feel and there's a sense of opening in the chest, you'll actually create the chemical response that feels like that. It's a, um, you'll get an, a nice, beautiful endorphin rush. There's a sense of opening and a warmth and a connection to everything. When I just meditate on opening my heart every day, I go into bliss states like crazy. And, um, and it's, I'm kind of conditioned to it now, but, um, but it, it happens pretty fast. And it's super nurturing to the body. So, so he was able to isolate these old experiences. And then what he did was he said, okay, I have a lot of anger towards this doctor right now, bordering on rage. So there's a sense of rage towards this doctor. And he started to think to himself, I wonder if I can do something about that. Um, I wonder if I could do something about that rage. And um I, and I wonder if I can change it for love. So he asked himself, he said, can I change this rage or anger that I have towards this doctor for love? And I'm going through this fast, guys. And what ended up happening was interesting. Is first his mind said no, got really angry. And he said, I could hear the thought, no, fuck that guy. You know, that guy deserves it. He's an asshole, that type of stuff. And I'm paraphrasing. I don't know what exactly what his thoughts were, of course. And then he said, wait a minute. Let's put this on the back burner. He made a deal with himself in a sense. And he said, can I just put this away? And if it doesn't work, you can come back and we can put it back later. And it's kind of the deal he made. And he said, can I change this rage, anger to love? And he said, suddenly there was like a burning or a clunk. And then there was a whole shift in his body. And he didn't go to love, but he felt lighter. And he's like, wow, Whew, that feels better. And, and now think about this for a minute. This was a new anger. So it was really fresh, easy to get to, perfect one to start on because it wasn't in there. Um, he, he didn't have anger towards his mother through his whole lifetime. Okay, so it's a little different. So he, he was able to feel it and feel that shift. And he said, now I've explored the feeling, this new feeling I had going on. I said, what is it? And I realized it was resentment. I was resenting, which is another form of anger, but lighter. And he said to himself, Oh, I feel resentment towards, um, towards this doctor now. And then he said it a second time, can I change this resentment to love? And there was another shift and boom, suddenly he felt appreciation for the doctor, this a little bit of love. And he was like, wow, that actually worked. And he was surprised. Now what he did do is he took his analytical mind out of the process. He wasn't thinking, can I logically, he was feeling these questions with his body and with his heart. That the important part was he started with the understanding of what he was going for. He got the feeling of love and then he worked his way back to it. So he just before that was feeling it because he could feel it without thinking about the doctor. And then when he thought about the doctor, it would go away and he's working his way back to this feeling and associating it with the doctor. So he was able to do this. And then he said, suddenly the memory of the doctor changed. Suddenly it was like, I could still see the same memory, but the way I looked at it was different. And he could see that the doctor was no longer, wasn't a bad guy. He said, I, I realized that the doctor was actually concerned. The doctor was worried, but he didn't know what to do. And I was being a jerk and I was pushing on him. And so he had to shut down. And so he was like, wow. And he suddenly had this sense of love for the doctor. And he, and he said, this is amazing. And then he thought to himself, I wonder if I could do this in other areas of my life. And he started going through all his memories and doing this and as much stuff as he could. And this went on for 24 hours a day for months because he was dying. He didn't, he didn't, he was dying. He's got nothing to lose. I got to do this 24 hours a day. So he just started doing it. And eventually he was sitting in his lounge chair doing it. And, and there were stages and growths and everything he did and realizations along the process. But 
what ended up happening was instead of dying, he started healing. Now, he wasn't shooting necessarily to heal his body. He was shooting to feel love before he died. But then within a few months, he was feeling better and better and better. He actually lived to be close to 90, late 80s, I believe, um, and had a full life after that. Uh, never went back to the doctor, from what I understand, at least until he was later, later years, maybe. And um, But what happened was nothing short of a miracle because his whole life changed after that. The more he processed these old memories and went through them, and started shifting him out of this heavy emotional state. And we're going to talk about what that is. And the more he rose up the emotional scale, as we call it, is the better his life got. Now, his whole life, he'd been a businessman. He'd struggled to succeed in business. Every business he ever had failed. Every business he ever had failed. Every attempt at success failed. Any of you have this? Like every attempt at success at whatever, maybe it's health, maybe it's dating, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's money. How many of them fail? And a lot of it has to do, and this is another key, note these keys, has to do with the emotional relationship to the thing you're trying to do. See, emotions are a guidance system. And um, the guidance system will, um, the guidance system is, is amazing because the guidance system can tell you when you're on track or off track. And I can point this out very simply. And this is what Lester began to realize through natural experimentation. The more he released, the more success he started to bring into his life. And the more suddenly businesses started to work, the more his life started to turn around, the happier he got, the healthier he got. Everything he'd been fighting for all his life started to show up as he got happier. So his number one goal, because he was dying, was it's a big motivator to release when you've you're dying. Got to be honest, I mean, if you've if you got a pretty good life, it's not as big of a motivator to release if you're okay, if you're like content or if you're mildly miserable, even, it's not as big of a motivator. So, um, so here he is at this, at, at this point where he's like ready to, to do whatever. And he just kept going. And what happened was he said over the weeks and months, he got happier and happier and happier. He felt more love for everybody around him. He started walking around this, the streets of New York because he lived in New York and he, anything that bothered him, it could have been a, um, a car honking in the background. He would release on it until he felt love for the car. Anything that bothered him, like it could be a person yelling, having an argument, he'd release until he got a sense of love for those people. And he just did this 24 hours a day, nonstop. He said he started to enter into these bliss states that were quite insane. And he said, I started to feel so good all the time. It was kind of amazing. And, um, and so he was sitting there at, 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 um, at one point and he said, I remember in the book, I was reading about his life. It was a specific, there's several specific books about his life. And it was really interesting. He was sitting there and um, he was thinking to himself, wow, this is amazing. Can it get any better than this? And then suddenly it would. And then he would think it can't get any better than this. And then he would ask that question again, can it get any better than this? Now, what had happened there? Why did it keep getting better? Well, his body had got so used to and comfortable with the idea of letting go releasing, dropping all this, and coming to the greater realizations and, and, and what I call revealing to these realizations, that he, uh, that it became, that his body was ready. Every time he asked, his body would just do the next thing. You see, when you get out of the way of your body and you don't fight it, it actually will do, especially as you get lighter and lighter, what you want it to do pretty easily. Where we go into fights is when we have a lot of deep embedded stories and unconscious beliefs that are in violation of what we're asking it to do. Um, and, uh, and so because of his extreme situation, he was really getting past that. Um, Lester Levinson, yeah, he was getting past that. Uh, he, he's moved beyond, he was ready to let go of all those old beliefs because what, what did he have left? What did he have left to hold on to? Nothing. There was no point. Now, how did I get into releasing and why did I, why, why do I believe in it so much? Well, I've done every technique under the sun just about. I had studied the tapping and hypnosis and NLP and I was a hypnotherapist and a ton of other techniques. I'm not going to get into them all. Um, um, and when I hit releasing, I really, really fell in love with it. I met a guy named Chad and me and Chad did some releasing together. A friend of mine referred me to him when I was going through a really tough period in my life. I was very sick. Uh, I had blood in my throat. I thought I was dying. Um, I had blood before that. I had blood in my urine a bit too. And I had just, my body was just a mess and toxic mess. And 
my business was okay, but I got a tax bill that didn't make really that year in my business. So I was stra- super stressed out over that. And I was working a, an insane amount of hours to make that money and I was burned out. And what also happened was I got that tax bill. I was working all those hours. I was, uh, I was super, super tired and I just didn't want to, didn't want to go forward anymore. And when I looked at that and I got that tax bill in the mail and I look and, 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 I, and I was like, wow, I got to, uh, not was in the mail, but I got it from my tax man. Um, I've got to pay this bill. I'm not going to, after all this hard work, I have nothing left. I was just beat. Now, what was I doing to, to move forward? Cause I was moving forward. So there was something working and what I was doing was getting up every day and doing the only way, the only thing I knew to do to make myself feel good, which I was drinking lots of rock stars and energy drinks. I was living on so many stimulants and stimulants would wake my body up and I'd feel good for an hour or two, get a bunch of work done and crash after have another one. I don't know if any of you do this, but put in the chat if you want to admit you do this because it really is, um, sound is off. Somebody just wrote sound is off. I can hear myself clearly. Is it still you're, breaking up? You're breaking up a little bit here and there, but it's minor. Okay, let me check which Wi-Fi I'm on really quick. Sometimes this thing jumps from different Wi-Fis. No, I'm on the good one. I can switch to the other one sometimes. One works better than the other, but it'll probably come back. Is it good now? No, the, the whole thing was bad. Well, let's try another Wi-Fi. Hold on one sec. Hopefully I don't lose the connection when I do this. But Where is the other Wi-Fi? Maybe there's something going on with it. I don't see the, uh, I don't see the other Wi-Fi. Oh, here, here we go. Um, that's better. All good. Okay. The speaker is not working. I'm yeah, I'm getting a message from the computer. Let me um let me go in here. Hold on real quick. Let me see if I got any extra stuff open I can close. I do have some extra stuff open, but I have it open. I don't want to show you guys stuff. That tends to be the problem when this happens. Um I close all of this. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll go from there. So where was I at? Oh, my life. I was talking about my life, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so in my life, there was a, and I, I was, I'd reached this point where I thought I was dying. And um, I was drinking all these rock stars, and just drinks for energy, pushing myself at 100 miles an hour. Uh, I would crash every evening. I wake up every morning feeling like I was in a coma or a fog, and I hated it. Um, and, uh, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to mute you real quick. Okay. And, uh, I was in a fog and, and then I'd have to drink these energy drinks to get going again. I had really bad overgrowth of, of candida throughout, throughout my body. Didn't know that at the time, but figured that out. I had a lot of gut damage, um, and I had to do a lot to heal myself. So I began this journey of detoxification and cleansing cut out all the energy drinks. I, I would literally go to bed shaking. And that's when I began, that's when I had my uh, dream where I woke up and I died. I, I, I woke up from a dream dying in the dream and it scared me so bad. That's ultimately what got me committed fully to this path. So then I, every morning I was waking up shaking with anxiety and fear. It was really rampant through my body. I also found that that's largely chemical when it's, when it's a ton of anxiety like that. And that's all it had a lot to do with the detoxification that I was going through. And I was having a hard time focusing on all the stuff I needed to do, but I knew that if I just stayed in bed, my life would not move forward. I would stay stuck. So I knew I had to get up in the face of the fear and move forward. So I found this, this guy, one of my friend, one of my friends, Peter, dear friend of mine, uh, recommended this guy, Chad, Chad. So I talked to this guy, Chad, and he taught me how to get this process and we started to do it together. And that pulled me right out of the anxiety. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I feel so much better. And I got super addicted to it really fast. Matter of fact, it made me feel so much better that I, I wanted to do it all the time. So what I ended up doing was literally shutting my business down almost completely. And I spent the next year releasing most of the day. I moved towards what made my body feel good and feel better. 
and uh, and I'd get up every morning. I'd release throughout the morning. I, I'd, I'd do a little work in the afternoon. I'd release throughout the afternoon, and I'd release hours and hours a day. And it was amazing what was coming up in my mind. I had images of a bloody gut, images of being sick, images of food affecting me because all my life I'd been allergic to food. I had all these cravings I had to release, and it was just one thing after another, and I was going through this for a long period of time. It was rough in the beginning, but I began to really love it. As I faced more and more stuff and kept moving, every day I'd move towards feeling better. This is another key. I'd move towards feeling good. I'd move towards what we call cap. I'd move towards joy, peace, love, and I'd hit it every day, and that started to expand. The more I hit these really nice states of being, um, the better my life got. I got to the point at the end of that year or so, maybe it was a little more than a year actually, where everything was just kind of flowing. I would think about somebody, they'd call me. There were so many synchronicities happening in my life. It was amazing because I was really living, uh, I was living very simple, uh, minimalistic. I was staying with a friend, sleeping on his couch, meditating at most of the day. And I would go out, take these long walks that were blissful and all these amazing synchronicities would happen. And it was just, an, it was becoming like a little magical. And I was like a little surprised. Um, now, I didn't know the story of Lester at this time. All I knew was I worked with my friend Chad. I learned the basics of releasing and I just went nuts with the basics and I dug deeper, deeper, deeper. And then eventually I went and saw a, a, an advanced releasing seminar with a guy named Hale Dwoskin. And he taught some stuff in a different way than the basic. And I, I took some of that in and went nuts with that too. I just took it and went crazy. And if I could get the slightest little release, I was happy. It could be one one thousandth of a percent of feeling lighter and I was happy. And that, that, cause I knew that would all grow so through compounding interest. And what ended up happening at the end of that year, a little over a year and a half was kind of amazing is my, I didn't know what I was going to do next. I wasn't sure, but I felt so much better. And then my life just took right back off again. The right business partner showed up, um, the right situation showed up. And everything started flowing again naturally. Whereas before I was always pushing and fighting to get ahead. Now everything was almost happening with me and flowing with me. And that's why I got, I really began to believe in this process. And then I began a process of learning how to do it correctly, which actually I think I slowed me down to be honest. Um, and, uh, and, and because there's a feeling aspect that I, I really believe in that makes releasing work so well. When you can truly focus on the depth of feeling in your body and the connection to your body, uh, the releasing works so much better. And, and if you get in your head about it, it doesn't work well. That's number one. And now, so that's one key. Now, another key is that, um, that was really huge for releasing, um, is, uh, I could log off and log back on, guys, or I could try this other Wi-Fi because they're saying the sound's bad again. I'll continue this one point. Um, is what, what was the last thing I just said, Jonathan? Do you know or anybody? I was paying attention to the sound. Um... Hmm. Oh, the feeling. Yeah, things were flowing, but then I had two keys I wanted to go over. Oh uh, yeah, feeling from your body. So the key was uh, one: you got to not feel from your body. Uh, you don't want to. I mean, you want to feel from your body, not be in your head. And the other key that was uh, super important is I began to, and this is stuff I learned from other teachers, was that um, I began to realize was that I was focused on being broken and trying to fix myself. And uh, what my other teacher taught me was to learn to see yourself as growing and not broken. I was learning this stuff to grow and not fix myself. And that was really hard considering how in bad a shape I felt like I was at that time. But the more I got to the point where I realized I was having a life and I was growing and learning from it like anybody else, no matter what our challenges are, and there's nothing wrong with me. And I released on that hardcore that I'm not broken. I'm perfect just the way I am. The more my life took off. Because because even within the releasing community, I would see people that have been releasing for years they were focused on being broken. They were stuck on the idea that they were broken and they were trying to fix themselves. And, and I would see this, I see this at ayahuasca ceremonies. I'd see this at releasing ceremonies. I saw this everywhere. People come in and they're like, 10 years later, they're still like processing their trauma. And the reason that is, is because the nature of being broken uh, expands the more you focus on it. The, by law of attraction, law of vibration, whatever you focus on, 
uh, for a long enough period of time, you're going to see more. Uh, in science, it's a reticular activating system of the brain, right? If I start thinking about buying a certain type of car, I start seeing it everywhere. It was always there. It's just I start picking it up. The reticular activating system starts to pick it up. So when I start focusing on being broken, if I want to find more reasons that I'm broken, I will find an endless supply of reasons I'm broken and I can work on myself for 10, 20, 30 years and I'll still be fixing myself. The moment I adopt the philosophy that I'm perfect just the way I am, perfectly imperfect, and everybody has got these flaws that make them interesting and unique, and I'm just growing and expanding through that, and I really, truly believe that, not just a belief is beyond a thought, it's not just an idea in the head, it's a belief, it's a feeling in a body, then what happens is I start to grow radically a lot, lot faster. And I see this in seminars. I go into seminars, and I was at a releasing seminar once, and I see this guy sitting there. Uh, uh, he's like new, it's like his, I don't remember what it was. He'd been there, what, he'd, he'd been doing it a little while, a couple months, I think. And he's like, oh my God, my business just made 10K extra this month. My life is changing. This is amazing. And then this girl raises her hand, this woman, and she's crying. And she'd been coming there for, I don't know, it's just like 10 years. And she'd been working on herself. And I'm finally going to have my breakthrough. And I looked at that and that old teaching that my old teacher had taught me Carl, who where he said, you're not Brian, you're not broken. Stop trying to fix yourself. You're perfect just the way you are. And, he, and, I, and the, when he said that, it, it all kind of came together at that moment. And I looked and I said, look at this guy who's been here just a little while. And he's taken off like a rocket. And look at this woman who's been doing this for so many years. And she's still struggling. And then I saw it everywhere I went. I went to an ayahuasca ceremony and I'd see it in the ayahuasca ceremony. I went to, and it, it blew my mind. I was like, yeah. It's all about that focus. So this comes back to the point of, of what releasing ultimately is about and what every good teaching is about. Um, it's about feeling good. See, your emotions are a navigation system for how in alignment with life you are. How in alignment with what you want you are, with life you are. And the heavier your emotions are in relation to any topic, the more out of alignment you are. If you're really in love with somebody and you really want to be with that person and you think about them all the time, then, um, and, uh, and you, that person rejects you, do you see how you drop lower on the emotional scale? You get heavier and heavier in your emotions, sadder, grief, pain, and eventually could go into depression. That person suddenly loves you and wants to be with you and hugs you and holds you, rise up the emotional scale because now what you want is coming to you, what you perceive makes you whole. Okay. And so the emotions are just an alignment tool for how an alignment or out alignment you are. The true key to happiness and to creating all the success you want in life is learning to create these really good states of emotion all the time in your life, whether that person picks you or not, whether you have the money or not. Lester used to say, when you get hootless, whether, whether you get the goal or not, that's when you're on the right track. And then the goal will most likely come to you easily or something better because life wants to give you what you want when you're no longer fighting to get it, when you're no longer pushing, when you're in emotional alignment, but it does not want to give you what you want when you're out of emotional alignment. Okay. Um, so is this all connecting with you guys? Hopefully the sound is better feeling versus thinking, your life was simple. Yeah, it became much more simple. It was really difficult to that point. Really challenging. Um, how can I get a fearless cup? Actually, I think uh, a girl gave it to me for my birthday. Her name's Patricia. She might be on this call. Are you out there, Patricia? Um, she lives in Romania. Uh, oh, she's not here tonight. I talked to her previous to this call. Too bad. I've got your cup, Patricia. So maybe we'll make some, some at some point. And who knows? <laughs> Mm. We made some fearless t-shirts too. Um, I got to make more of those. Um, okay. Uh, so where was I at? Okay. So you got to feel good. And that's, that's ultimately what I wanted to get to. Um, but how do you do that? There's two areas of life that you can feel really good in. One area is your day to day, getting out of bed in the morning, making breakfast, taking a walk down the street and, and the things you do day to day how you view life in general. And number two is your goals. So you got your day to day, you got your goals. Which, if you can't feel good in your day to day, how the fuck are you ever gonna feel good with your goals? 
you're gonna, if you are miserable where you're at right now and you want to get the ultimate girlfriend of your dreams, good fucking luck. If you get her, you're going to lose her because you are searching for something outside of yourself to make you happy and you haven't learned to make you happy. And so, uh, so this is really important. Um, I was reading a, a phenomenal book that actually is a book on, on releasing from the fifties is the way I see it. it's called God works through you. Now I'm not spouting uh, that you need to be Christian or religious or anything like that. This book is just plain good. It's metaphysical Christianity is the way they look at it instead of fundamentalist. Um, and, uh, and I think there's phenomenal teachings in here too. And he said in that, the, and it was a really interesting statement, but he said the law, and I always believe in the natural laws, and the law of cause and effect will screw you over and work against you in a sense. I'm paraphrasing again. And until you, uh, until you resolve all your deep embedded stories, and then it will work for you to give you everything you want. So if you got a re, if you're really angry about life, you haven't resolved your issues with your mother, or your father, you get up every morning grumpy, you're depressed, you blame <clears throat> the world, and you play the victim for everything then the law of cause and effect is going to give you a life that matches your, your, your life story, what you believe and what you've invested in. <clears throat> now, the law of cause and effect in, in, in uh, other traditions would be like karma. And so, um, but the law of cause and effect, when you're free, when you're living in this place where your base reality is good and you're like, life is beautiful and I can open my heart and I can enjoy the birds in the morning and it's spring, I love it outside right now. And you can really feel that, you feel gratitude for life. Then the law of cause and effect starts to work for you and starts to give you everything you want. Because you, if you don't have a past cluttering up what your mind is trying to create right now, weighing it down like weights on a hot air balloon, then everything just takes right off. And that's what happened to me after that year. After that year of being, working on myself, a little over a year, my life started to rise up naturally because I had spent a good portion of that year releasing on my past. I went through every story I could find from my childhood and I did it several times. I went from the earliest memories forward to every memory that had an emotional impact on me that pulled me down. And then I did it again. And I did it again. I do this hours a day. I go through all the memories of my mother, all the memories of my father, all the memories of my stepfather, all the memories. It didn't matter. I, and some of these memories I had to go through. Uh, uh, what are you drinking, Brian? <laughs> I don't know what he means by that. That's funny. I had to go. Oh, the rock star energy drinks earlier. Um, and so I had to go through um, this stuff several times and I go back to the same memory and have a new charge on it and a new, a deeper charge or a different charge. But I just kept doing this. Why would I keep doing it? Because ultimately I got happier. My life got better. And then my life got better. And then my life got better. And it just kept happening. And then I started teaching it to other people, clients, students, and I started changing it. And I taught it in all different ways. And I've got an insane amount of hours teaching it. And I started seeing all their lives, their lives change too on a radical levels. And it was also on top of that, a tool they could take home and use themselves easily and effortless. And they could learn to use it all day long, all throughout the day. So, um, and I did start seeing positive effects in my life right away to some degree. Some things would change. I think ultimately the po first positive effect was I felt better. <laughs> I just like, I, even though I might not have been in the best place, oh, I can calm, I can breathe now, I can relax. And I start, and every time I felt better, I assumed I was moving in the right direction. So, um, so we want to get the push out of us so the world stops pushing back because ultimately that's something that Lester Levinson would say. He'd say, we want to get the push out of us so the world stops pushing back. And that's huge when you think about it. Because what we're, most people are out there doing is pushing on the world to try to get what they want or running from the world, being averse to it, so the world stops beating them up. And that's why they're not going anywhere. Because people don't want to give to people that are pushing on them. Like that salesman that's on the phone every day, pushing, pushing, pushing. Maybe he'll get a few sales here and there, but he's working his ass off, burning himself out. And the more miserable he gets, the less successful he becomes. The guy that's out there meeting women by pushing, 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 and all the women are rejecting him. And week after week, month after month, we see it in this business all the time. It's like, why don't girls like me? Why don't they like me? Because you're pushing. You're not allowing everything to happen. You're not letting it reveal itself to you. So you have to learn to reveal these higher states of being in your life. 
Uh, I'm going to get to why I was, I've been calling it revealing, and it's been really powerful for me to call it that. Um, so what we want to start with is feeling good. We want to start with what we call CAP. Now, Lester Levinson uh, had these, these emotional states, apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride, and the CAP was courage, acceptance, peace. Hawkins, David Hawkins, another great teacher who wrote a book called Letting Go, which is a phenomenal book, said apathy, grief, fear, uh, desire, anger, pride, courage, acceptance, love, peace. And I love having the love part in there. And then the top state was imperturbability, which was Lester's ultimate state, the untouchable state. Okay. And that's what he worked towards is getting to this state where he was just great all the time. What some people would call an enlightened state. And, um, and Eckhart Tolle says enlightenment is just sanity. It's when you reach that state where you're living, your heart's open, you're living good, you're sane. So let's, let's just look at it that way now. And the world doesn't push on you anymore because you're not pushing on the world. So what does that look like? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to write this on the board so you guys understand it. When you understand the emotions and how they affect you, because emotions are just programs. They're not you, right? How do we know they're not you? Because anything that can come in and out of being is transitory. It can't be you because you're still here when it's gone. An example of that would be anger. You can be angry one minute, and then a few minutes later, you could, the anger can be gone. You can be laughing. So the anger is ultimately not you. Um, and so let's let's look at a higher let's let's look at another picture here. Um, where is my where did I put that? There it is. Okay. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. There we go. And this, of course, is Word. And so just to help you guys understand, I'm actually moving my microphone, which is on the book here, so I don't get as much echo. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Hold on one sec. Changing my pen. So this is how Lester broke down the emotional scale. Apathy, grief, fear. Now, I want to break these down for you guys a little bit. Apathy, grief, and fear are the three heaviest emotions. Apathy being complete shutdown, depression, numbness. So this is, this is where you numb out right here, okay? Uh, this is when you've been feeling so much pain. Let's say a girl broke up with you and you can't get over it, and eventually you just numb out, okay? Uh, people will say to me sometimes when they're in this state, I ask them how they're feeling. They say, I don't feel anything. I feel nothing. Um, what are you feeling right now? Nothing. And that's how I know because you can't feel nothing. So if you feel nothing, you're actually overloading your emotions and, you're, and it's like a circuit breaker is popped and you're shutting down. Grief is pain. It's overwhelming pain and this is the pain of attachment. Usually when you're breaking attachments or you have an attachment that, and it's coming up and rising to the surface like the death of a loved one, the, the breaking up of a girlfriend, the death of a belief system. Uh, I knew somebody once who lost his belief system. It was really powerful because his whole life he'd been a devout Christian, fundamentalist Christian, super serious in the church. And one day somebody managed to get into his head that God wasn't real and convinced him that God was not real and that Christianity was just a lie to him. And he went home, did a bunch of research. He proved that guy right in his research, in his mind. And what happened was he uh, ended up... Um, um, uh, going into massive pain, grief over the loss of his belief system and ultimately went down to apathy and then had to do some work. Okay. Fear. Fear is like anxiety, nervousness, uh, uh, things like that. And so all these have synonyms too, you know? Uh, so grief could be sadness, lo hurt, loneliness, pain, crying out, you know, wanting somebody to help me. Apathy is giving up pointlessness, nothingness. Okay. Um, Apathy, grief, fear, lust is the next energy. And this is going heaviest to lightest. Lust, anger, pride. These are the next three emotions I look at. Oops, that's a D. Um, so lust is wanting, craving, needing, chasing. 
And I can't tell you how many clients I get that are stuck in this craving, chasing, I got to get it. I got to do it. What can I do to get it? And, and that's that. And what that does is it, it, it projects the, the mind into the future and they never get what they want. See the mind, if you really, if you say, I want that, you say to the subconscious mind, I don't have it. And the subconscious mind always creates what you tell it to create. So you're telling it to create the not having that by saying, I want that. So, so the wanting literally pushes away what you want and then creates more anger and frustration typically. Now, now there's some ways around that. Um, we'll get back to that at some point, uh, whether today or on another call. Um, anger is the next one. Anger is when you're trying to push on the world to get what you want. Okay, it's pushing, 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 pushing. And anger, resentment, jealousy, you know, forcing, rage, things like that. Pride is when you get into win, lose. In pride, there's a winner and a loser. And doesn't, don't think that pride means you have to be on the winner side. My W there looks terrible. Don't think you have to be on the winner side, okay? You can be on the losing side um, and be really prideful about the fact that you're the biggest loser. Oh, I always fail. Never works for me. And then now you've got apathy and pride probably mixed together. You're putting, you're putting pride on top of your apathy. You're like Eeyore with a bunch of pride about being Eeyore. You're the old guy in the senior home at some point that's got the worst illnesses and he's going to beat everybody for his illnesses and you're prideful about it. And he's like, damn, I'm a good loser. You know what I mean? And you get a joy out of it. Um, a kind of a sense of a little bit of peace out of that, but it keeps you stuck at that energy. Okay. Then when you start to climb out of it, you end up in um, courage is, is the one of the key energies you want to develop. And because that pulls you out. This is a win-win. And then courage, acceptance is where you go to from courage. And I'll explain this. And then Hawkins would add love right here. And then above that, I'll write it over here is we got peace. And you just end up in a state of peace in the end. Bliss, that's the bliss state a lot of meditators end up in. When you have no more resistance, this is what you naturally rise up to. It just, you rise up to that state of peace or one of these states here. And this is what I mean by revealing. If you can truly reveal, let just keep releasing and revealing what's under each release, you're going to eventually end up here. And I want to get you focused on the reveal of what's behind each release more than I want you focused on the release itself. People get too attached to the release and they focus on trying to get the next release and that gets everybody stuck. So, uh, so courage is the energy of win-win. It's the energy I can do it. I can make it happen. I can, I can do it. We can do it. Not I can do it. We can do it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. The more courage you have, the more comfortable you get with the energy of courage. Courage is adventure, aliveness, alertness. The more comfortable you get, the easier it is to face all of these emotions down here. Okay. The more uncomfortable you are with courage, and a lot of people are, they're afraid of their own courage. So they, they spend more time down in the fear. The, um, the harder it is to face your own emotions, the more you want to avoid. Okay. Acceptance is, this is the way it is. If you can accept these emotions, then you can release them that easy. Like if I can look at my anger and say, yeah, I'm an angry guy and I'm used to that. I'm okay with that. I can handle that. I'm a man. I can handle it. Or I'm, I'm a powerful woman. I can handle it. Then what happens is you start to be able to go, can I let some of that anger go? Can I reveal something great beyond that anger? Can I reveal, can I let it go and just see what's behind it? Let it reveal itself. And then what happens is uh, uh, that re through the release, you get a, you reveal some deeper information, a realization, an understanding behind it. Okay. And then acceptance. And then ultimately you end up feeling that love state again, because this is what Hawk, uh, Hawk, not Hawk. And this is what Levinson went for. He went for love. All, every release. Can I change this to love? Can I change this to love? Can I allow this to shift to love? And what was he doing? He'd feel his apathy and he's, can I get 1% love, 2% love? Can I get a little more love? He'd feel his anger. Can I get a little more love? And as he started to rise up naturally throughout every part of his life, it took time, compounding interest. Then what happened was it, you know, the beginning, it probably started really slow like this. And then he started rising up. That's the how compounding interest chart works, right? 
you guys have all seen those and um boom he shot and then he shoots up and so but the more he developed this ability to go right to love and let these emotions go in the face of any energy the more his life started to work the more his body started to heal he focused on the emotional state first and the outside circumstances last but then the outside circumstances came to him with ease because he focused on the magnetizing state the state that creates your reality is this making sense to everybody okay good Good, 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 good. And you're right. If there's a fear, there's courage. There's always courage, acceptance, love, and peace. You, matter of fact, all this stuff always exists at once, including fear, even apathy. It's what you're used to tuning into. There's every radio station is out there, right? Every potentiality is out there in the universe in quantum physics. If the, if the potential for it exists, then it already exists somewhere in consciousness. We, we'll think about it first, imagine it, see it, and eventually we bring it into physical reality. Okay, so that potentiality means that apathy will always exist. And, but for the people that don't tune into apathy because they're not attached or averse to it, they don't make it wrong or right, um, then they'll just naturally choose to rise up here to these top energies. You literally train your brain to be more comfortable up here than down here. And then it's like, oh, why would I want to feel apathy? I could. I could go down there and hang out with somebody in apathy and talk to them. Well, how are you doing? Doesn't mean I'm going to go behave, get turned into an apathetic person. And then you go right back up here. Whereas the person who has a problem with apathy gets stuck down there. Boom, just like that. Um, uh, Dom said uh, and, uh, that I had told him once that all heavier emotions were repressed self-love. And that, that was a game changer for me. And that is true. Because what happens is your natural state of being is up here. It's up, it's up in this category. Okay, that's what we call cat. And here too, all this. And the more I imagine that's a hose free flowing. It's, it's flow state. This is flow state up here. Okay. And you got this free flowing water flowing through the hose and you're watering the garden and it feeds everything. The more I get angry, it's, I squeeze on the hose a little bit. The more I get sad down in grief, I squeeze on the hose a little bit. And eventually apathy is I've completely kinked the hose and I can't get the energy up to the top anymore. And when you realize that all that is, is you're repressing your self love um, by, by squeezing on all the energy that's coming to you, you're, you're actually squeezing and pushing the energy away. The easier it is to start letting it back in and letting it unkink the hose and start to move you to the top. And that's what they're trying to do in stuff like yoga and things like that. At least the original yoga is not the exercise that we call yoga today. Um, so, uh, is everybody getting this so far? It's right in the chat. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Good. Thanks guys. Perfect. Now, what do we do about this? Um, since I'm already 55 minutes into the call, I'm going to go right to releasing now. And we're going to talk about releasing specifically. Uh, because like, this is why we have a whole, we can spend a weekend doing this. Matter of fact, I can spend a week doing this, teaching this and going deeper and deeper with deeper releases. And you guys will just process a lot of information. Um, and it's powerful. Um, so let's, let's take it another level deeper. Let's see. Go ahead. That's what I want. Okay, so let's take it a level deeper. Um, uh, when we do a release, what we're doing is welcoming the now feeling. So you want to, uh, Hawkins doesn't really give words, Sedona Method gives words, I'm gonna talk about it again. But you're welcoming, allowing, or acknowledging, uh, welcome. the now this is the key feeling so what are you feeling now guys right in the look at your emotional state right now what are you feeling is anybody feeling anything heavy and, and let's you know just notice what you're feeling and somebody said grief okay great answer and i saw courage on that great answer a little anxiety, frustration, sadness, tension in the chest. So you can welcome these feelings, guys. 
welcome the now feeling that you're feeling right now and just sit with it for a moment. And what I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do when you're doing a release, because what we're doing is we're working on moving towards cap every day, more towards cap every time you do releasing, moving towards cap or love. If you want to focus specifically on love, I'll give you one I focus on. I don't necessarily focus as much on cap anymore as I focus on be on feeling that like I'm one with God. And it may sound hippy dippy to you guys, or it may sound Christian to you guys, but you know, I and the Father are one really works for me. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I've done it where I've just focused on love, courage. I've done it where, you know, but I, what I'm doing is I'm working towards that. So welcome the now feeling, whatever you're feeling. And then um, if we use uh, uh, the simple letting go process, you can ask, can I let that go? Okay. Can I let that go? Can you let that go? And just notice what happens in your body. Now, I don't want you to think about what happens at all. I'm going to bring this home a little bit more for you guys. Don't think about what's happening. Just ask and notice what your body does. Does it get lighter anywhere? Does it get heavier anywhere? Does it get, like if you're feeling grief, do you feel more grief? Do you feel less grief? Notice what your body does. Can I let that go? And then ask, would I let that go? Ask that question. Would I let that go? And see if it changes a little bit more. Now we, we're playing with something called the 1% rule. I'm explaining, so I'm getting you a little in your head when I'm doing this, so we're going to do it again but uh, in a moment. 1% rule means you don't need a big change. The tiniest change will compound into a big change eventually. If you get a prick in the hole of the dam, eventually the dam's going to break, okay? So would I let that go? Does your body get lighter anywhere at all? And when? When would you let it go? Would you do it now? Would you do it in the future? When would you let it go? And if your body, for some reason, gets more resistant and wants to say no, let it say no. Let it say not now. Because what you're going to notice for all of you that do that, like your body goes no, and then you go, you say out loud no, you'll probably get a release right after that. Because as long as you're vibrationally congruent with the answer, you'll probably still get a release. You'll get some type of like letting go. So we're going to do it again. Welcome the now feeling, whatever you're feeling right now. And just notice what it is. Notice where you're at on the emotional scale, apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride, or some other emotion or, or sensation. Maybe it's a sensation in the body, like tightness in the chest or heaviness. Just notice what it is. And then welcome that now feeling. And now I'm going to ask you to just sit with it for a second as you welcome it, as you allow it, as you acknowledge it. And just notice what it feels like. Notice you can handle it. And now, can you let that go? Can you let it go? It's just a feeling. Can you let it go? Can you let any of it go? Even 1%, 1 percent, one one hundredth of a percent, or all of it? Would you let it go? And notice what that feels like. And if it's a no, a no is fine too. And if it's a no, say no out loud. Maybe it's a no, maybe it's a fuck no, maybe it's, yeah, 1%. Whatever it is, just let, let the answer be the answer. And when? When would you let it go? If you could let it go, and you would let it go, when would you let it go? Would you let it go right now? Two minutes from now? What does your body want to say? What comes up to you? What comes to your consciousness? Good. And just notice now if you feel in a lighter or different. Somebody wrote buzz in their chest. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. This is compounding interest. And 
if you can get even one one hundredth of a percent of a release, like a tiny little opening, like somebody just wrote, yeah, my chest opened a little bit, I felt courage. Um, then what happens is eventually it's going to compound and you're going to, that's why I got so much change. I did it on a regular basis so much that uh, in the background while I was driving a car, walking down the street, sometimes I don't recommend you to necessarily do it while you're driving the car when you're learning, but it becomes so automatic. You kind of do it without thinking because it's so easy to do that the consistency eventually starts causing radical shifts in your nervous system. And you start getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And the lighter you get, the more you grow. Now there's more, we can go deeper and we get way more complex and we can start learning how to release deep programs and embedded stories and all kinds of stuff as we've learned. But, but first you got to learn to make a sentence before you, you know, you get deep, you know, like if I'm, I'm lear- I've been learning Russian and I got to learn some basic structure and I got to play with it first. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. So just play with this a little bit. Can you let this go? Would you let this go when? Now let's see if we can take this concept a little bit deeper. Um, And the reason I want to take it deeper is because instead of giving you a lot of new tools, which we could do to go to get deeper, to more stuff, what I'd like to do is get you better at doing the basic release because that, if you can get good at that, really good at the basic release, then your whole life can change. Okay. So when we look at this, on the compounding interest chart, typically what happens is that the, the graph, here's the, here's the graph, okay? This is time, and this is growth, okay? And so what happens is if you're doubling, if you're putting a penny in the bank every day and you're doubling it or anywhere, you're just doubling a penny every day for 31 days, what's going to happen is, is this is going to happen, Okay? Up here, you're going to have $10 million, a little more than. Um, down here, it seems like nothing's happening. At about day 25-ish, somewhere around there, I'm guessing day 25, you start seeing this thing spike up, 26, 27, 28, and then it just goes boom like, like that. That's the same thing that happens with releasing. In the beginning, you might only be getting some little release if you start with simple stuff. But as time goes on, it gets easier and easier and easier, and you start being able to just drop buckets of stuff out of your body in your whole life as this happens starts to change radically the outside world seems so radically different everything starts to change okay um i feel lighter at my stomach i release a bit i feel better and that was one release we could literally do tons. it gets to where i just sit there i don't even ask the questions i just sit there with it and that's where the revealing process comes in um if we go a little deeper and we go here what is a release ultimately the release is you feel the emotion feel the emotion or feeling sensation or feeling okay and you stop resisting it or you stop pushing on it okay that's that so you want to learn to feel and so to do that better and to understand how to get a better release a lot of you when you go to feel an emotion you go into resistance with it okay so i'm going to turn off this camera for a minute i'm going to turn off this screen we're going to go back to oops what did i just do there uh uh, yeah stop share okay cool so if you look at me for a minute you can all see me again right Uh, somebody wrote they almost fall asleep when they release. It's probably apathy coming up. Okay, that happens to a lot of people when they have a lot of apathy in their body. Um, so here I got a ball. This is just a, a you know, a, um, I don't know whatever kind of ball this is, rubber. But you can use anything. I've got this uh, croquet ball here. It's, it's a little thicker. I've got these handles here. In the past, I've used this one's. These ones are really tight. Uh, in the past, I've used just a pen, held onto a pen. Uh, I like a bigger object if I can. If we take this object, and this is the synonymous with a release. If I welcome the now feeling, notice what your now feeling is right now. What is it? Is it anxiety? Is it hurt? Is it doubt? Is it heaviness? Even courage. Like if you can release courage, you're going to move up towards peace. So that's a beautiful thing. So I want you to welcome whatever feeling. Get, get an object, everybody. I don't care. Get a a pen if you have to hold something like this um 
And then what I want you to do is I want you to feel the resistance in your body, the tension, the um, um, rejection as an emotion, feel the rejection. Um, and I want you to, as much as you go into feeling it, like I feel it here and I, let's say I feel it in my chest and it starts tightening, or I feel it in my throat and it starts tightening or my shoulders start hunching. I want you to put your hand in sync, in literal sync with the tightness that's happening in your body. So as I start to feel my chest tightening, as I feel the tension or I feel the rejection, the hurt, I'll squeeze my hand and I'll feel that tightness equal to what I'm feeling in my body. And then I welcome it. And what I want to do is keep squeezing and holding as I welcome and feel that release until I reach a point where these two sink so much that I can start to let go. And then as I start to let go, I start to relax here with the hand. I should be relaxing here too. If this was the area of the tightness or this is the area of the tightness, I'll start to relax both at the same time equal. And if it tightens again for a second, I let it, I let it tighten. And I keep doing it until I can let go. And then eventually I can relax. And if you notice a release is doing less, I'm not doing something with my mind. The body is actually relaxing. And what we're doing with the release is we're finding the spots in the body where there's micro tightness and we're feeling it. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. You'll feel these intensifications, it's called. These intense, and that's what this is. And then this is when we get into, especially into deeper releases. Then you start to relax, let go. And then it's, it's almost like as you relax, you could just drop the ball. You're actually doing less, not more. Intellectual people, analytical guys, want to think the release into being. I'm going to think about doing this. No, that's up here. This is synonymous. You're, you're more the observer of the release, watching it happen as if you're watching a, a, a movie than anything else. So you just feel it. And then eventually it wants to relax because you've gotten used to seeing it. You realize you can handle it. You can look at it. You can be with it. I can handle this ball. And then I start to relax and I drop the ball. So everybody do that. Welcome the release, whatever you're resisting right now, as much as you're resisting it. In this case, uh, Bully wrote, uh, I feel stronger frustration and anger. So welcome that frustration. Welcome that anger. Let this squeeze to the degree with which you're, 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 it's, it feels in your body, the tightness and the resistance. And then ask yourself, can I let that go? And only let go at the speed your body's willing to relax in that spot. And you might need to tighten back up a few times until eventually you feel looser. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need 100%. Even a little bit looser is a huge gain and a move in the right direction. Yes, Marie, still you can use this to heal that. Can be a, it can be a huge bit, but I'm not going to say that it will do it all. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll, you'll get a bunch of releases, and then you'll, you'll find the right supplement that goes with it. But as you release, answers start to show. Then you're, not, then you're not ready to drop the ball yet, Joe. You want to take time and work with it, get another release. Another, it might take five, ten minutes, especially if you're working on Joe, and you have a tendency to work on some pretty big things. So notice if you're working on something really big or if you're starting with easy stuff. Start with easy stuff. Like Mauricio's gastrointestinal issues is a big thing. I would start with what's on the surface. Can I get a 1% release, a 2% release, a 10% release? Um, resistance is also a feeling. I'm going to get to that. Um, I'm not getting this, Alex wrote. So uh, you might have to watch it over and over and keep practicing or you're coming at it from your head. So welcome the idea of feeling the ball. Now, what do you do when you release? You're revealing what's behind the release. That's the revealing process. I want you to focus on it as you get a release, what's revealing itself to you. If you were in a movie theater watching a movie, and let's say it had a big curtain. I used to work in a movie theater that had this big, beautiful curtain that would rise up at the start of the movie. What, you, what you're doing is you're waiting for something to reveal itself to you. So as I do this and I start releasing, there's a revealing that's happening, a revealing of a lighter energy, a better feeling. Some, and maybe it'll go into resistance for a bit, doesn't want to reveal. And then eventually it starts to reveal. And what you're looking for 
I don't want you to focus on the release now. I want you to focus on the revealing. As you relax, can you let it reveal itself to you and then let it reveal itself to you a little bit more and then notice what's there. And then I want you to sit there with whatever revealed for a second. Using this concept. Good. Now again, what are you feeling right now? Notice what you're feeling. Write it in the chat box. We're going to go through this one more time. Write what you're feeling. Grab your object. Get ready. Get ready. And notice what you're feeling right now. Annoyance at lawn care noises. Perfect. That's the type of stuff. Tired, fear and jealousy. I still feel lots of uh, lower push, grief. So welcome all that. Now, I want you to welcome the now feeling. And I want you to link it to the feeling of this. Just welcome the now feeling. And sit with it for a moment. And then let it be and see, notice you can look right at it. You can feel it. You can observe it, whatever it is. And now, as you begin to let it go, I want you to ask yourself, can I reveal what's beyond this feeling? Can I let it go and reveal what's beyond this feeling? Can I let it go? And what's revealing itself to me? And just let, as it releases, there's going to be a loosening and something else is going to rise up. Notice what that is. And then can you reveal it some more? And then can you reveal some more and go a little deeper? That's it. Go into the shame. And then can you reveal, can you welcome that feeling and then reveal what's beyond that? And just keep revealing. For me, I'm always looking to reveal my oneness with God. Lester would be love, his oneness with love. So I'm looking to reveal can I reveal more love? Can I reveal more courage? Can I reveal more peace? And then what'll happen is you'll go through the layers of emotions as you're working your way to that. As you reveal one layer, there'll probably be another layer, maybe sadness, and then maybe grief. And you keep going through each layer, eventually it'll start rising back up. It'll go to the top. I might, but if you're working on something big, that's a different story. I'm talking about little things. Big things are going to take a little longer. You're going to have to keep going through stuff. Good. Now, what do you all, as you reveal, I know some of you, what, what are you feeling right now? Did you get lighter or heavier? Did you feel something? Good. Bailey wrote peace, lighter, 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 tired. Okay, tired. Let's talk about the tired one. Tired is probably apathy. It's some form of resistance. Okay. And resistance is a whole art form in itself within releasing. We haven't got into it yet. How do you deal when the body pushes back and to get the release? And that's a process in and of itself. A little lighter, lighter. So that's the key. If, as long as you guys are getting lighter, you're moving in the right direction. If you continually do releases, you'll continually get lighter. Now, every once in a while, you will get resistance. And some of you will chronically get resistance. If you're one of the ones that chronically gets resistance, write that in the chat box for me. Let me know. Do you, every time you try to do a release, do you go into resistance? Okay. Some of you, and I had this too, have a program of resistance. You're used to feeling resistance in your life. At you, you fight off emotions with resistance, stuckness, resistance. I don't want to feel it. I'm, I can't do it. I'm going to fail. That's an apathy problem, okay? That's a whole nother problem. For the average person, they'll get regular releases. But for some people, we got to work out this resistance. You can welcome, and I want everybody to do this now, we're going to keep doing releases. Can you welcome the now feeling of stuckness? Can you welcome the now feeling of resistance? Find the word that works for you. Write the word that works for you in. Can you welcome the now feeling of uh, pointlessness? This isn't going to work because it's a whole overall program. And notice what you feel. Fatigue. Welcome the now feeling of fatigue. And then again, as you sit with that now feeling of fatigue, 
I want you to now take it a level deeper and welcome the whole overall now feeling, the now program of fatigue and resistance, the program of trying to stop yourself all the time. Because so you, you'll probably see that you do that a lot in your life. Every time you go to learn something new, try something to do something deeper, you go into this resistance of some kind, apathy, sleep. So notice the, the overarching picture of it, okay, for all of you to get it. And then just welcome it. Welcome that now feeling of resistance, fatigue, sleepiness, the overarching program of it. Welcome all the thoughts, images, and sensations that come up with it. Good. Now, can you begin to let it go? Can you begin to reveal what's beyond it? Can you reveal something lighter? And notice what comes up for you. And just keep focusing on the reveal till the release happens, till your hand relaxes, your body relaxes. Good. Now, Bully, you might not be able to let it go because there's more of it. So let it be, let, take 30 seconds and resist as much as you can. Just welcome the resistance, squeeze, take a minute, just be in the resistance. Just keep used to feeling it. And then when you get used to feeling it, then start relaxing. Perfect. So we got some energy in your arm. Um, yes, you can ask, can I, can I allow the now feeling? Because what that does, why that's such an important statement is it takes you out of the wanting. If you're in the future wanting a different feeling, then you're not in the now feeling what you're really feeling. And then you can't let go of what you're really feeling if you're stuck in the future. To truly make a shift in the now, you have to be in the now. To truly make a shift in the now, you have to be in the now. Good, a little bit of crying, that's perfect. Thanks, this helps. Good, good, good. And this is exactly how it works. So this is releasing in a nutshell, guys. Um, and this is also the reason I call it the revealing process is because if you keep looking for the reveal beyond the release, I want to ultimately move you to that. First, we start with the release. But when you start looking for the reveal beyond the release, then ultimately start looking for the reveal, the, re the revealing of courage, acceptance, love, and peace. That's when your life's going to change. Now I'm going to write something else on the board here for a second. As you reveal, I want you guys to start focusing on getting a reveal now. And as you reveal, let me go back to my little whiteboard. Um, gotta share my screen. Okay, as you reveal, we'll just cross this out so you guys don't get confused. Uh, you're gonna reveal, you're gonna ask, for what's beyond the current emotion to be revealed. One, reveal. I should write reveal, not revealed. Two, you're going to recognize. That's typically what happens. One of these will happen, actually. Not necessarily in this order. You'll recognize uh, a greater truth, a lighter emotion, a greater feeling. So you reveal, and then there's a recognition of what is beyond it. And then number three, there's um, realization. And so what happens is as you, as you go deeper and you get a deeper, more profound experience, you can have realizations. The realization that, that, that Lester Levinson's doctor wasn't being a jerk to him was a huge realization for him and it freed him of a lot of feelings. The realization that that kid when you were five years old that treated you like shit, uh, uh, that girl at five years old that teased you so much actually liked you. So deeper realization changes your whole experience of life. And then if you really get some deep, um, uh, deep understandings, you're going to have uh, revelations. 
as you get as you have your releases rev up. So as you do the releasing, you begin to reveal what's behind it. And from the revealing, you'll get recognition, realization, or revelation. These are three degrees. Each one is bigger than the other. Recognition is more like, okay, I see it. This is cool. Realization is, wow, this is cool. You want to go tell everybody. Revelation is just massively life shifting. This is when you have a, an awareness, a, a, a huge shift in your life that, that can, it's going to affect every part of your life. Okay. Don't get stuck on any of these. The big mistake everybody makes is when they re release and something reveals itself and they have one of these, especially realization and revelation, they want to think about it. They want to analyze it. They want to study it. They want to tell everybody. And that stops their growth the whole time they're doing that. You can get stuck on a, on a realization or a revelation, bragging about it, talking about it for years, for months, for hours, you know, just slowing down your growth realizations and you want realizations just like miracles you want realizations and revelations to be normal and every day you want to get to the point where yeah there's a new realization great there's a new revelation beautiful you love it you appreciate it but you don't get attached to it don't attach to something new this is another problem i have with a lot of students is they come in here and they're looking they're literally looking for the next big realization that's going to change every part of their life or the next the thing the revelation that's going to shift everything and they're looking for it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I, now I got it. It's all done now. There is no done. Every realization will lead to another realization, which will lead to another realization. And it's going to be through the compounding of all of these that your life is going to change. And so if you get fascinated by any one piece of growth, you get stuck. And this is huge. Okay. Um, Awesome. Okay. As I see that bully's crying. That's great, bully. That's awesome. It's a beautiful to cry because it's a release. It's a release of grief, which then allows you to get lighter. Okay. Um, so beautiful job, guys. So uh, so in this releasing process, what we've got, what we want to play with, and we, I want to review a little bit, is you got the basic questions, you got the understanding that a release is not doing more, it's doing less. And as you release, you're going to rise up the emotional scale. The more you live your life in uh, courage, acceptance, and love, peace, let's say 80% of your life could be lived in courage, acceptance, and love, and peace, then your life is going to become magical, guys. Um, uh, did I delete that one? I must have popped it out or something. But the more you can live up in courage, acceptance, and love, and peace, the more magical your life becomes. And that's where the power is at. So... Whenever you're focused, so I haven't even started talking about goals yet. We're not going to get into goals today because what I want you guys to work on is just getting your everyday existence released. Now, you can release on goals. That's beautiful to release on goals. But if you're miserable with your day to day and you're just trying to get a goal to make you happy, then you're moving in the wrong direction already. You want to learn to get happy and then let your goals come to you. Because think about this for a minute. If you're trying to get a goal to be happy, you're chasing your goals. If you chase a puppy, it runs away. If you chase an animal, it runs away. If you chase a dog, it runs away. You want your goals to come to you. So when you become somebody that's, so if you can get, let your goals go for a little bit and it, it, it doesn't mean you don't have them, you don't affirm them, but if you can every day work on getting up into courage, acceptance, love and peace, then go work on your goals from that place of being that's when you're going to get what you want. I did it in an artificial way originally. I did it with rock stars and energy drinks. And it worked, but it also destroyed my body and I had to pay the price on the other side. I didn't learn to do it naturally. So naturally, I'm learning to feel better and better every day in every way so that I can draw what I want to me with this minimal amount of external, like, yeah, meditation's great. Anything that heals and nurtures the body dancing to your favorite music, listening to uh, uh, playing guitar, if you love playing guitar, whatever puts you in cap and then come back and work on your goal after you're back up out of the funk. But if you keep pushing, and this was the, the thing I finally figured out, I stopped pushing while in the funk. I would re go release and clean up my state of being. And then I would come back to what I'm doing. And it made such a huge difference in everything I did and all the results I got. 
my whole life changed because of it. Okay. Um, so it's really hard. There's so much more I could teach you guys, guys. Uh, this it's, it's really hard to teach everything. And, and, and I mean, there's so, like, for example, we can start talking about deep programs. We can start talking about the core wants and what drives the ego. We can start talking about the structure of the ego and how to break it up. We can start talking about, um, um, all the different emotions and, and all the subtle emotions and how to learn to develop true emotional intelligence so you can release 10 times faster. Um, there's so much more we can develop in this. Can't do it in an hour and a half though. Okay. It's impossible. Um, so what we do have is, uh, and I'm going to take some questions here after I talk about this briefly, we do have a releasing program coming up. It's online for you guys that are stuck at home, like all of us. And it's coming up uh, May 9th, 8th and 9th. Is that right, Cairo? May 8th and 9th, I believe. Let me take the screen share off. May 9th and 10th. 9th and 10th. Okay, cool. Had it wrong. May 9th and 10th. Do we have a link for that? If anybody, if you guys want to really learn how to yes. do this, you want to get a lot deeper into it, then I suggest you sign up for that program. Um, it's going to happen on May 9th and 10th. It's going to start at 10 a.m. We're going to run till about 6 p.m. at night, maybe even a little later. We're going to have breaks, lunch break and breaks throughout the day, but it's going to be a full workshop from home. And if you guys are interested in that, it's a, it's an absolute steal of a price. Uh, we have a link for it that's posted into the, uh, their, their guys are posting it into the chat box and you guys can um, get involved in that. And that's where we can really take time and work on this stuff at a much deeper, deeper level to get these shifts for you guys. So get signed up right away. Um, and cause I'm going to talk about tension in that class and, and the power of tension and then how to turn tension into fun and make it fluid and flow. So it's a beautiful experience because the moment you start learning to step into tension, which is where, where, because tension creates a reaction, right? If there's no tension, you just sit on the couch all day, nothing happens. When you just take a step in a certain direction, it causes tension. Just like lifting weights causes tension, then it causes growth. And the more you can enjoy stepping into tension, i.e. courage and learning to use courage and acceptance to enjoy tension, the more you're going to learn to enjoy life. The more you enjoy life, the more life is going to get back to you. You see, your subconscious mind is the most powerful computer in the world and it knows how to create the reality you want. So as soon as you love what you're doing, it will show you resource after resource. I'm reading your chats over here, that's why I look this way. It'll show you resource after resource uh, of how to get what you want, okay? But if you hate what you're doing, you're not happy. You're fighting to get what you're, you're 80% down in apathy, grief, and fear, and 20% up in courage, acceptance, peace, that's as most people are, then it's really hard to move forward in life. The law of cause and effect will always give you a lot of resistance, stuckness, challenges. You'll be fighting to get to the next level and it just sucks. And so if you want to stop fighting to get to the next level, then learn to process these stored emotions, get them out of your system. Now, one more thing that I didn't say. Um, if you have a thought, I don't like myself or a big program that, that you're always stuck, nothing ever works for you, that you can't do it. And you, the only thing that holds that in place is the emotions. If I have the thought, I don't like myself and I feel hate towards myself and there's, and I release the hate, there's no more hate. That thought disappears. I stop thinking it because the hate is the glue that holds the thought in place. Now I know it's a simplification. You might have a whole program of thoughts that, uh, that say, I don't like myself. And we need to break, learn to break that whole program up, which is at a much, much deeper level. That's a paradigm shift. So, um, so I want to invite you into that, guys. If that's the world you want to get into and you want to learn to process these emotions, click on the link now, step into the tension, and take some action. And learn to create the reality that you want to create in life because that's what I've done. Now, literally, I came from poverty. I came from sickness. I came from lack of health. I came from using energy drinks to get my joy out of life. A lot of people use Ritalin, Adderall, energy drinks. They push, push, they, they, they do all kinds of stuff. Addiction to masturbation. These are their sources of feeling good. What if you could just feel good? That's what we're talking about. That's what we're heading towards. Okay. Um, now with that said, um, let's take some questions. What do we got, Jonathan? All right, so let's start with Sonnet. Um, he said, you've mentioned you had 
you have bladder issues. I have that too. Can you please tell me how to heal, how to heal it through releasing and meditation? What are the questions I need to ask? Some details will be appreciated. Thank you. Well, you got to get out of wanting to change it. Um, this is, it sounds counterintuitive, but can you welcome the issue and then release all the emotions attached around it? So this sounds weird, but can you welcome the tightness? Can you welcome the pain? Can you welcome the, the, the frequent, the feeling of frequent, and then notice all the emotions that come up with it. The wanting it to heal, the wanting it to change as a feeling, the anger, the frustration, and as you release those and then reveal what's behind them, then you'll start to get a new feeling, a new sensation. You might have to do that a while. If you've had it for years, like I had mine for 30 years before I started releasing on it, then yeah, there's going to be a lot of pent up stories, thoughts and emotions, inferences that are deep in your subconscious mind. You just keep letting them go a little bit at a time. And then what happens is it, it is there's two things that will happen. Either it will naturally start to heal on its own or you'll start to get motivations and realizations. Remember I talked about the realizations and the revelations of what else you can do, like go see this doctor, go talk to this person, take this supplement, you know, and I've had a lot of that. My bladder is a radically better because of that very reason. I went and saw the right people at the right time. But I, the funny part was I didn't, those people were in my life. They were, like, they were around, but I wasn't going to see them until I did the releasing. I just, no, that won't help. That won't work. That's not, I was choosing all the wrong stuff. But once I started releasing on a regular basis, the next thing you know, I was like, what am I doing? What, what was this guy got? What is that guy? And then I'd go see them and I would get more and more answers because the subconscious mind knows how to direct you to the answer. It always does. It processes at an ins it, it, millions to billions of bits of data per second where the conscious mind only sees a little bit of that. So it knows the answer. The, the thing is, is if you don't associate the answer with pleasure, the answer won't come to you. That's the best way I can put it. So that's how you use releasing. I'll welcome the tension. And then, and here's another one. This is another type of release. Can you welcome as much uh, tightness, pain, uh, resistance there is in your bladder right now? And just notice what it feels like. And you can all do this with any part of your body. And just let it be there for a second. Notice you can handle it. You can be with it. And now welcome the looseness as much as there is, the openness, the expansiveness, even if it's 1% or a tiny bit, tiny, tiny, there's something. Just welcome that and just be with that for a minute. Enjoy and appreciate that tiny, tiny bit or the huge amount if it is. This could be tension in the shoulders too. Now again, welcome for, for, other, for other people. Now welcome the tightness again, go back and do it again. Welcome the resistance. Welcome the part of you that doesn't want to feel this as much as you do. And then notice you can handle that. You can handle looking at it and resisting it and fighting it. And then go back to welcoming the looseness again as much as you are. And just notice what that feels like. The looseness, the, as much as it is there, no matter how small it is. Or big. And then go back to the tightness again or the resistance. And notice what that feels like. Just sit with that for a bit. Breathe it in, be with it. And then go back to the looseness again and sit with that and notice what that feels like. And allow that to be there as much as there is. And then go back to the resistance again and be with the resistance. And then notice if there's any wanting to do something with the resistance or about the resistance. And just watch that wanting. See if you can start letting that dissolve a little bit. And just be with the resistance. Now come back to the other side again. Welcome as much looseness as there or openness. Acceptance. Good. Just be with that. And then just let it all dissolve and just be for a moment and notice you can just be. And what this is doing by going back and forth, we're playing with the polarity of it. This is a deeper, another type of release is we're playing with the polarity of the feeling to help to 
uh, see it from all these different sides to get for, to get the subconscious mind perspective and to, and to break up all the wanting, chasing, craving, and the resistance and the fighting. And if you do it enough, you might have to do it for an hour or two hours. You'll start seeing, uh, you might have to do it over several days, every day for a little bit. But you'll start seeing different ideas, opportunities, solutions it will start to come to you as you get that as you as you go beyond it, you'll start to see the realizations, the revelations and all that type of stuff. And you just take them and you run with them. You don't get stuck on them. OK, so. Um, how, hopefully that helps you, Sonnet. Um, and you got the basic idea. You can continue doing that. As I allow, I notice the sensations are moving and changing by themselves. Yes. So when you're doing a release, this is what I call it revealing. This is the exact reason I meant to do this analogy. It's a super important analogy. The revealing is the same as watching a stream go by or waves roll in. The stream is in constant flux and the ripples in the stream are changing moment to moment. You do not want to try to trap a ripple in place. To enjoy the stream, you just got to let it flow. It's the same thing with the emotions, sensations, feelings, and images in your body. You let them flow. The moment you try to trap them and study them, you stop the release. Because the motion, the sensation is going to be in a constant flux inside your body, shifting a little bit at a time, leading towards the ultimate release. And you're going to have to let it. Sometimes it intensifies and gets a little worse, and it gets lighter, and, it, and, then, and eventually it starts to break free. Okay. Um, uh, well, give me another question. Just find some of the important ones that, that are. Yeah, I think this is a really uh, common one for people. Uh, how do you not, Daniel was asking, how do you not lose drive and passion for achieving goals if you're at peace with yourself at all times? That's a great question. I love answering it. Um, I've had the same question at one time. Because what is the nature of human existence? Okay, if you look at somebody who lives in, has a lot of fun in life, like a Richard Branson, he is, lives in courage and acceptance, has a lot of peace in his life, lives a great life, but he never stops creating and growing. Why? Because he has a, a, a because the nature of human existence is growth. Consciousness, you could argue if you're really spiritual, but at the deepest level, we're stillness. And but to be in a physical body, the body constantly grows. Does a tree stop growing? No, a tree never stops growing because that's the nature of life and we enjoy it. And whatever we focus on is going to expand. So if you just enjoy the idea of the goal and you don't need it to make you happy, but it looks beautiful, all kinds of resources and stuff's gonna show up and you're gonna most likely go take action on the goal naturally because it's a natural expression of your thoughts. And that's, and since you're in a body, you want to express out your thoughts. So if you have the thought you hate, your, your goal is heavy, then the natural expression of your thoughts is to destroy your goal. So it's not like you'll ever stop taking action. It's that your action becomes easy rather than destructive. Okay, do we have another one? Yes. Um... Hey, Brian, in my, in my, in relation to your journey in releasing and the concept of the 1% rule, at what point in your daily releasing process did you start to feel quantum leaps? And what was your experience of your first quantum leap? Thank you. That's a good question. I don't know if I can answer that. I've had a lot of them. Um, I mean, just getting out of all the anxiety in the beginning, I remember getting up, I was so sick and struggling. I would get up and I was sleeping on a couch and I'd have to, to get out of bed. I'd cry myself to the shower and take a shower and go out because I didn't want to, I, I felt like if I didn't take some form of action, I was fall. I, I, I was, I was stopping. I, I was going to just disintegrate and sleep all day in bed and get more and feel more and more sorry for myself. Um, when I started doing the releasing, it really took a huge curb off of that uh, right away. I was able to get on uh, on the phone with uh, my mentor at the time. We would do a little process and boom, I would feel so much better. In my, and that to me was a quantum leap. It was a quantum leap because when you're in that much anxiety and fear to come out of it, 
and be able to think and focus again, feel good for the day or for a few hours even is a quantum leap. And then when it starts, when more starts to come up, I, I started releasing that. So the, that, that would be one of the earliest things. Um, um, another one was, uh, uh, geez, there's so many, I remember getting, I had really bad candida problem and I was and in my mind, I could never get rid of it. I, I had it for years and I knew I had it and I, I just, this is impossible. You gotta, and then I easily, when I got my mind focused right on, instead of battling candida, which is what I was doing, I was in a fight with candida and I was angry at it to creating health, a healthy uh, intestinal tract and flora. And I focused primarily on that. I stopped f- focusing on the fight. Didn't mean I still didn't take action, but suddenly I got rid of it with ease. And I realized, wow, everything that we do, as another teacher, Walter Russell, once said that everything you do, once you get into alignment, is easy. There's nothing hard to do. We make it hard. And that, that was a huge, another realization that was huge for me. And I started making huge shifts after that in my body and healing my body. Um, I used to have a lot, real hard time making money. You know, money seems easy to make. It just, it just keeps, keeps coming and keeps growing. Um, and I can't even tell you when that happened. It just started happening and kept happening and kept happening and kept happening. I remember when I first released on money, this was a good one. Uh, many, many, many years ago, I was broke my whole life. I was struggling, never had any money. I was trying to figure out how to survive. And I did a bunch of work on money and um, belief systems and all kinds of stuff. And literally one week later, I, 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 I got a new job in sales. And I'd never, I'd had plenty of jobs in sales, never made money. I took this new job. One week later, I made $2,500 for one week's work. It was the most money I'd ever made in a week. And this was a long time ago. And I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, that's possible. And that was a huge quantum leap. Because up until then, I'd struggled, struggled, struggled to do that and to go. And then every week after that, I made at least $1,400, $1,500 or more for, for months on end. And I was like in this state of shock but loving it at the same time and appreciating it. And that's what kept it going for so long. So these are just some examples. There's tons of them. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's do a couple more. I know this call was long, so, and I know you guys are really interested. What, what else do we got? Uh, I think uh, I had one, but it's uh, okay here. Uh, can welcoming an emotion invite more of it? I feel like I have a few weeks worth of sadness that wants to come out now that I started releasing it. Uh, yeah. Welcoming can t- definitely, cause you can be in total resistance to the emotion. You can welcome the resistance and you can welcome the emotion and you can welcome the resistance and, and you can be in total resistance to the emotion. And so the more, uh, if you can just sit, I've actually given clients who are stuck in wanting, they can't stop chasing. I've literally given them the, the assignment before to um, to just spend a week welcoming or a month welcoming and learn to feel it and let it reveal itself. And that's ultimately good releasing anyways, because when you get really in alignment with your welcoming, you're going to get releases anyways. And then with something behind the welcoming, and then you're going to reveal more and reveal more. And ultimately, it comes down to the revealing because the revealing focuses you in the right direction towards growth. What happens with releasing is we get stuck on this idea that we want to get a release. I want to get you guys stuck on the idea of, of the, what reveals beyond the release. So you're focused in the direction of moving towards cap rather than trying to get rid of something. I don't want you staring in the rear view mirror while you drive the car. I want you looking forward to what's revealing in front of you over and over and over again. And the realizations and the revelations and the rec- and recognizing stuff. And then, and just letting it come one after another. And that's when your releasing will become magic and money when you get good at that. What else we got? Let's do a couple more. And uh... Okay. Two, so I'm trying to find the good one. So, um... It's a lot. How do Rish is asking? How to disintegrate the feeling of being overwhelmed? How to recognize I am running into a downward spiral? Thank you for asking. Question. uh, This is basically about the spins, right? What he's asking. 
Yeah, being overwhelmed. Yeah, when we get overwhelmed, we go, it's really hard to release. Or really hard to do any technique because your mind is spinning. It's what we call the spins when your mind is in a huge race, spinning at 100 miles an hour. So what you want to do is, uh, is stop all releasing when you're in the spins. When you recognize that you can't get a release and that you're, everything, and then you've got a million different thoughts and feelings and you just feel kind of stuck, Take an hour, two hours, and just welcome and watch the spins. Watch all the emotions. Welcome the stuckness. Welcome the emotions over and over again for a little while. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. When I was really bad in the spins in the beginning, when I first started, it would be like an hour to get out. Sometimes I just have to sit and watch. And I'd sit and meditate. And then I'd come out, and then all these releases would come out of me. Um, now it's usually like once I recognize the spins, if I get it in, it's just a minute or two. I can get, I get back out of it. But but uh, but you got to welcome that, you know, because what's happening is your mind is racing so much, you're going into frustration. The frustration is causing you to have a lot of different thoughts and you're starting to fragment those thoughts and the fragmentation of those thoughts. You're, 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 it's like, I want something over here. I want something in your mind is just going this and it's like a big sprinkler head spraying everywhere. You, you got to get that calmed down and refocused again. And so you got to focus on the overall spin itself and welcome that and just be with it. Notice all this. So to do that, you welcome all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations that you're experiencing. And you welcome the, for any frustration, you welcome any wanting, chasing, and then you practice just being with it and watching it and observing it for a little bit. And then you take a deep breath, feel your body and you do it again. And feel your body, do it again until eventually you can relax down into your chest and then ask your heart to open. When you can start to feel your heart a little bit or your chest a little bit, and then eventually your stomach and you're starting to come down from that energy, then you'll probably start getting releases again, or you will start getting releases again. Okay. Um, so we're at 149. It's almost two hours. I'm sorry we didn't get to as many questions today, but uh, it, it was, uh, it was, it's a lot to teach. And I always try to figure out how am I going to teach some good practical releasing in an hour? and um, give you some good stuff and good value. Cause I always want to give good value. You guys know that. So I hopefully you enjoyed the call. Hopefully you had a really good time. I loved having you guys here. Um, I love seeing you all here. Let me see something. And um, you guys are all awesome. And so what, remember that we've got the releasing seminar coming up. That's going to be in May. Make sure to click on the link, uh, a link in the, in the, um, in the chat box. So you guys can be part of it. I'd love to have you all there. Cause now I can really get down and dirty and teach a lot of stuff and we can really dig into this stuff. It's, it's going to be a lot. So, um, so get signed up for that right now. Uh, there'll be a lot more people over the next few weeks signing up too. So I look forward to teaching you all. You're all awesome. Um, and I love all the thank yous and everything that you, uh, you wrote in the video. It's amazing to see you guys. And remember guys that only the confident really live. I'll see you guys in the, uh, in the next, uh, what do we have coming up next? Anyways, guys, do we have another something this week? We have something for Tuesday, right? Yeah, you should have something for Tuesday. It's a continuation of this call, I think. If someone with Sam is going on Tuesday, I think it's a Q&A call for you guys. So make sure you're on that call too. And in the meantime, I'm going to be doing another, uh, we're going to be doing an interview with two releasing students, two female releasing students, I believe next week. I don't know what day of the week. Uh, make sure you catch that, guys, because uh, one's going to be my sister. The other is going to be Anna Maria, and they're going to be talking about their experiences with releasing and uh, how, um, how it's changed their lives because... This is, this is, guys, just so you know, my whole family is starting to learn this. My two sisters learned it. Now they're spreading it to other family members, and it's changing my whole family right now. It's radically shifting my whole family, um, and that's how much I love it because uh, it's huge. And it's not only shifting my whole family. It's shifting my mother who's not even learning releasing because all her kids are changing so much that she's changing too. So it has this really deep, powerful effect when you get deep inside. When you shift who you're being at a core level, the people around you change too. So if you really want a life-shifting tool, this is it. Okay, guys? Okay, again, uh, have a beautiful day. I'll see you in the next call, and, or Sam will, and maybe I'll be around. And, but I'll definitely see you in the next releasing call. And remember, only the confident really live. Take care, guys.